Okay, so the big question today, and it is Monday, September 12th, is how much ground has Ukraine taken back? And I'm going to go over that, and I'm going to explain this in a way that you understand everything. Okay, so here we go. By the way, if you don't know me, my name is Darren Gertis. I'm a professor who has been tracking this since almost since the war began, but I've been doing these videos for more than 100 days now. And uh, okay, here we go. Let's not belabor that. Subscribe if you're interested. Thank you for being the kind of person who cares enough to be watching this. Okay, so let's start with this. Uh, Ukraine is about the size of the state of Texas, and the Russians hold a landmass about the size of North Carolina. Uh, according to the ISW, Ukraine's southern counteroffensive is continuing to have significant impacts on Russian morale. And they go on and say the success of the recent Ukrainian counteroffensive operations may be impacting the will or the ability of Russian command to use newly formed volunteer units in a timely fashion. Volunteers are simply refusing to participate in combat. And according to Russian law, because this isn't a full war this is a special operation they can refuse to go i mean that's the way that the law is written in russia so this is actually a thing now how much ground has been taken well i'm going to talk about that president Zelensky, in his nightly address said where is it it's just a little bit down here we go from the beginning of september until today now that's only two less than two weeks from the beginning of September until today, our warriors have already liberated more than 6,000 square kilometers of the territory of Ukraine. Okay, so what does that mean? That means it is a, about a third larger than Rhode Island. It is a landmass that's larger than Delaware. Here's Delaware on the map, right? <laughs> I mean, that's what they've done. It's really incredible. So here it is. Let's watch what's actually happened. So 9-7, let's just go back a week and watch the map change. Look for blue. See the blue? 9-8, 9-9, 9-10, 9 and 9-12. I mean, it's pretty amazing what they have been able to do in such a short period of time. Okay, let's look at a few articles. Before I get to uh, fun with Russian state television, as I usually do at the end of these, uh, let's look at a little bit more context to tell us what's actually gone on before we look at that bizarro world that is Russian state television or Russian state news. Uh, Russia lost, uh, launched dozens of air and missile strikes on power plants and other locations in apparent retaliation for Kiev's success. So they were bragging on Pravda uh, here uh, on September 11th, five eastern regions were left without electricity. Okay, so great. So you ran away here, like this is what's going on. You you ran out of this territory and then bombed their power station and are taking credit for it. So yay. Um, okay, and uh, Ukraine troops uh, headed north repeatedly, uh, or reportedly recapturing towns all the way to the Russian border. And it does appear that they're pretty much at the Russian border at this point. Like this, this line up here, that that's Russia. Okay. So they've, they've gone all the way up now, oops, uh, all the way to the Russian border. Russia responded by launching missiles again. They did it for a second time in less than 24 hours. Uh, Ukraine also said that Russia has engaged in 18 missile, 39 airstrikes. Ukrainian MP uh, said that they found four corpses with signs of torture. They're founding at least a thousand residents have died as a result of six months of fighting. Um, so it's it's been brutal, but they've, they've gotten that land back. Now, where does that leave Moscow? Well, the Kremlin uh, said on Monday that Russia would achieve all of its aims in Ukraine. They're still saying that line. And Putin was on TV the other day chairing a meeting of the economy in which he made zero, none, nada, no reference to the military situation. He's really in a bind because he's got to keep up this front that, uh, oh, this is going great. And now he has the power of blocking Google and, and Western media, but he's really in a bind. Okay. So speaking to that same thing, Moscow fireworks contrast with worsening uh, news from Ukraine's front lines. As Russian troops speedily retreated from Ukrainian, uh, the Ukrainian army triumphantly raised its yellow and blue flag. Uh, there were fireworks at 20 and uh, 23 coordinated displays in different parts of the city to mark uh, Moscow's 875th anniversary. So they're celebrating the birth of Moscow and 
so it's a terrible time for all this stuff to be happening as i mean if, from the russian perspective okay reluctant even to admit what was happening in ukraine and that ukraine is a war and not a special military operation the kremlin decided that canceling the festivities would have been too direct an admission that everything was going wrong ukraine took back towns where just a few weeks ago, Russia was loudly pro proclaiming itself new overlord forever. Yeah, I saw articles where they're saying Kharkiv is Russia and it will always be and that kind of thing. Well, apparently not. Um, and they were talking about how, well, this is just a regrouping. Well, maybe it's not a regrouping and I'll show you why in just a moment. Here's a CNN article. Russia plays up its support with China as it retreats in Ukraine. And so that's what it's going to need to do next. It's going to need to like, look, look, we have our strong allies. And and if we know anything about Putin, he's not going to take this lying down and go, you know what? Maybe we need to start to get a deal. He's going to start to thump his chest even harder. So here is uh, um, some visuals from Radio Free Europe about what what they took back when they took things back. Uh, this was not really a regrouping. Regroupings don't kind of get stuck in the water trying to get away. They don't. They don't leave this kind of weaponry behind, unused uh, drones that they can that the enemy can pick up and with manuals and everything. Uh, unused weapon. That, that's not regrouping. That is getting out of town quickly. That's that's what's going on. And so, yeah, uh, good job, Radio Free Europe. Uh, Zelensky calls for more Russian sanctions. Now, this article was interesting for a couple of reasons. One, it confirmed the 6,000 that uh, that uh, Zelensky was talking about. But watch this. About 5,000 civilians have been evacuated to Russia. These are Russian collaborators. This is the small percentage of those that are actually pro-Russia in the region. Now, <laughs> um, they were getting out of Russia, and then Russia closed the border to the Belgorod region. So no, no more of them can get out. Like Russia doesn't actually care about their collaborators in Ukraine. Like they claim to, well, well, you have to protect these Russians that are there. Well, they don't care enough to actually leave the borders open for them. So I just thought that was really telling about how the Russians view even pro-Russian Ukrainians. Uh, Russia, uh, Ukraine claims a Russian military command has stopped sending its new units into the country. Uh, and this is validating what the ISW was saying. The military command of the Russian Federation has stopped sending new units into Ukraine. Why? The military command has suspended it uh, according to the... Now, this is according to the Ukraine general staff uh, page. So you know, take it with a grain of salt because it has that, that bias or that perspective. The, the current situation of the theater operations at this trust of higher command forced a large number of volunteers to categorically refuse the prospect of service in combat conditions. Okay, so we know that volunteers have refused. If this is the reason, we don't know that that's the reason, but that's what they're saying. The situation is affected by information about the actual number of dead while the losses, and I talked about that yesterday. Go back one uh, to my explainer yesterday about the actual number of dead, how many people have died in Ukraine uh, on the Russian side, and the, the document that we think is true, but may not, may or may not be, but we think is a legitimate document. Go back and look at that from yesterday. Um, the, uh, the situation is affected by the information about the actual number of dead, while the losses from private military companies and those mobilized from temporary occupied territories are not taken into account. So if that is correct, then you have tens of thousands dead on top of another maybe 10, 20,000 potentially dead. I mean, who knows how many in contractors, LDP, uh, uh, DPR, uh, so the, the amount of people from the territories are not even considered in that. Okay, let's keep moving. So how many have died here? Over the past week, the armed forces of Ukraine have eliminated more than 1,800 invaders. This is, this is uh, Ukraine's count, okay? 1,800 invaders in the southern direction. That's not even talking about what's going on up here. That's talking about in the southern direction. But this is really an interesting article, and I'll tell you why. Okay, they say over two weeks, 1,800 uh, Russian soldiers killed. Or let's look at the math. That means 1,800 divided by 14 is about 128. And that's a legitimate kind of figure. That's, that's within the lines of what we have seen throughout the war. Now, 
fun with state Russian state propaganda. Here's RT yesterday talking about Ukraine lost thousands of soldiers in the counteroffensive, says Moscow. Over 4,000 pro-Kiev troops were killed in the southern and eastern Ukraine in a five-day period. So they just made crap up. Um, <laughs> and they said 4,000 and another 8,000 injured, uh, according to the official Russian forces, conducted precision strikes with missiles and artil uh, artillery targeting pro-Kiev units. I mean, unless you're counting power plants, that's, you know, that's not what it is. Okay, but let's look at, at the math here. 4,000 in five days. Um, let's look at this. 4,000 in five days. 4,000 divided by five. That, that means that Russia is claimed while it was bugging out, while it was fleeing, okay? It's getting out of here, getting into Russia or into the occupied territory. While that's happening, they're claiming that they killed 800 uh, Ukrainians per day during that time. It just, that, that math doesn't work, okay? So uh, here's another RT article. Uh, the, uh, RT is Russia Today, by the way. And I would encourage you to watch it. You can watch it live on RT's website just so that you can see just how crazy this stuff is. The attack has eliminated 45,000 tons of ammunition in southern Ukraine. Okay. Uh, high, con uh, high precision strikes. They don't really do high precision strikes. Eliminated depot, uh, depot of 45,000 tons of ammunition. The statement also claimed Kiev's losses as more than 300 Ukrainian service members killed and up to 1,000 wounded in the last 24 hours. Well, that's a little bit closer, but that's still way high of, you know, the highest we see generally is about 200 killed a day. I mean, some, something like that. Uh, so I just, I don't believe it. Okay, uh, and that 800 a day figure, that's even more laughable. Okay, a couple last things and we'll be done. Uh, uh, Med Medvedev, Medvedev, the former Russian president, called the current situations in Moscow for negotiating with Kiev a warm-up for kids. Like this guy, he used to be kind of, you know, neutral, kind of, okay, and he's he's kind of come out as the Medvedev, Medvedev 2.0, who's just anti-Western and... Um, okay. In the future, total surrender of Kiev on the terms of Russia will be required. Volodymyr Zelensky uh, said that he did not intend to negotiate with Russia, which to his words, uh, the current ultimatum is a warm up for kids compared to the requirements of the future. So he better agree to the, our terms now, or you don't even want to know what our terms will be later. And then they always talk about in these articles about how uh, Kiev didn't fulfill the Minsk agreement. Well, you actually kind of forgot about Budapest. So we'll uh, we'll call that even and, and see who wins on the battlefield. Germany has crossed a red line, says Russia. And again, remember, they're always talking about these neo-Nazis in Ukraine. Well, the very fact that Ukraine's regime is being supplied with German-made lethal weapons crossed a red line, considering the moral and historic responsibility that Germany has before our, before our people for Nazi crimes. Okay, the Nazis are essentially dead of old age, if nothing else. Uh, there might be a handful of them still around, but they're essentially died out. And Germany, it's a crime not to admit that the Nazis did what they did in Germany. So this is a little, a little rich. Um, the German government has unilaterally acted to destroy bilateral relations with Russia. I think you might have done that, Russia, when you invaded Ukraine. Um, I, I don't know. That's, that's just my perspective. Okay, last one. Russian MP declares the need for full-scale mobilization. He's right. And I know that that sounds weird for me to be saying that, but on, the Russians, I believe, will lose unless they fully mobilize. And then they, have, they, they will have, then have breathed some life into potentially winning. I don't know that they still will, but they potentially have a greater shot at it if they do. And I, I hope they don't. I don't want them to. But it's about time for the status of the special operation should be changed. We must mobilize all our forces, says a member of parliament. And that's, he, he at least gets that. So, um, okay, that's where we are. And you can see all the ground that, that the Ukrainians have taken over the last week or so. And it's just uh, amazing. Okay, that's all that I have for today. Thank you for being the kind of person that cares enough to watch this. If you're still here, please subscribe and I will be back tomorrow.